what are you currently most fired up about in your job? Like, what are you, what, like, what, what aspect of marketing and, and e-commerce are you most fired up about right now? Wow. That was such a good question. So right now, what we're doing is we're having a lot of early conversations planning for Q4. It is not too soon to be doing this because what we work with now is understanding that we don't have drop shipping clients. We have clients out of inventory. So every single person that we're having conversations with is planning for inventory. Now, it doesn't sound sexy. It doesn't sound something that you enjoy to do. But if they don't have that part right, there's no way you're going to be able to spend any dollars coming into the peak buying time. So we're, all my conversations right now is like, okay, what is the offer we're doing for Black Friday? We're starting much sooner because what people don't realize is when a new campaign or a new offer goes off, it, why would you introduce a brand new offer with a brand new creative that is no social proof? You have to start winning all these auctions again, and it's not proven. So what we like to really focus on is we know if this ad has so much social proof, it's already winning auctions let it run through. So we're applying that thinking to the offer we want to run for Black Friday and already have it running a month to two months before. Just acquiring that social proof. Smart. Yeah, so social proof is just a must, right? Like you've got to build that into your funnels. Yeah, because again, you these infographics, right? The reason why it's so much focus is on acquisition is because they're not taking care of customer support. They're not taking care of focusing on the customer relationship. They're just like, I need get to my churning and burning you didn't like the quality i apologize buy this too. that's exactly right that that thought process of not having a growth mindset delayed so we have delayed attribution it's delayed gratification in building a brand and that's what it takes oh my gosh you know this you know this yeah. when if it's going to be sustainable and you want it to be around something that you can my focus on building brands that can be sold it needs to be able to win back multiple customers right I agree. So that's a cool point you bring up, building brands to be sold. And this is something we're trying to do with all the, the e-commerce training that we're, that we're putting out here is giving, you know, giving people that mentality of having a holistic strategy, not, not just jumping in for the quick buck, because if you do that, you're going to miss things. You're, you're not going to see the whole invisible architecture that goes into, you know, into, into funnel marketing. I was having a really cool talk with, uh, someone yesterday and they say the word funnel is such a broad word. Like funnel means your Shopify store. It means your email sequence. It means your remarketing sequence. It means your Facebook ads. And like so many people have a very narrow definition of funnel. And the more, the more like all encompassing, like your, your funnel is, and the more you broaden your definition of funnel to include the moment, you know, a customer sees your brand to, to, to the moment they die really is, is, you know, what you should be thinking of. It, of course. So what you're saying is it's customer lifecycle journey, right? Everybody. So our boy Mo, Mo loves funnels. Yeah. Mo's, Mo is funnel. Mo is funnel. Like Mo is foe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll pay it. Um, honestly, I'm sitting here going like, okay, everything we do is a funnel, right? By the time you, like you said, everything, once you enter and then where they are in that journey, they have their own mini funnels throughout the entire journey. But understand that it, it begins with that first touch point. And then as soon as they get the product, that's the next touch point. And how are you engaging and cons- keeping that consistent? Yeah, that's how you're going to build long, long-term long value in this whole thing. So one of the things that you also hit on in your case study, it was sort of like it was funny. It was like thrown on there as a as like, oh, yeah. And by the way, once we had w- stuff working, we knew we knew which ads were working. We knew how we scaled. We knew this product. People loved it. You, you started to make some influencer deals at that time. And you kind of threw oh, that in yeah. there. Is that is that your is that basically where you see influencer marketing fitting into the?